We're going to make the plane adjusting hammer. This is a, a brass hammer with a wood on one end. And you could, you know, you could probably just use a brass hammer, but I'd like to make it like this because I like to hit the metal part with the metal part of the hammer and the wood part of the plane with, with the wood part of the hammer. It just seems right to me. But I'm sure either either way would work. So in order to do this, I've got a piece of brass. Now the overall length of this is going to be two and a half inches when we're done. So it just works out proportionally if the brass is one and seven eighths long. It's a seven eighths diameter. And the the wood part of the head is five eighths. So of course five eighths plus the one is seven eighths gives me two and a half. They're going to be held together with epoxy. And because I don't just want to glue the brass directly to the wood, I'm going to drill a hole in each end and put a small uh, piece of dowel in there just to provide a little extra strength. I've, I've never had that come loose yet. The handle is either use white oak or ash. Uh, I've got ash in this case. Ash is a very strong wood, you know, typically what's used to make baseball bats. So it can take a lot of uh, impact. You want a fairly straight grain piece. And this is, this is about, uh, it was four quarter material. So it's a, roughly an inch thick and maybe seven eighths wide. So we'll shape that once we've got the head together. I also need a little bit of material for a wedge. We're going to cut a, a slot in the end of the tenon. And then to make sure it's fully locked in there, we'll uh, put a wedge in there when we epoxy it together. So it makes for a, a very strong, durable little hammer. If you have a bar stock and you need to cut it to length, I find the best way to do that is with a sled on the table saw. Ideally, you would use a non-ferrous metal cutting blade. Those work really well. They're made just for that purpose. Uh, you could also use a triple chip grind woodworking blade. That should work okay. But ideally, you've got a blade specifically made for cutting metal and not, not steel, but non, non-ferrous materials. So I'll, I'll make a mark on the fence and just hold this up to the mark. You don't want to trap it between a stop and the blade. And then just you know, hold it nice and tight with a push block and just cut it nice and slow. And then you get a very nice uh, surface finish. To mark the center for the hole, I'm going to use a center finding head on my combination square blade here. And we'll set that like that. And I got this grab from the, uh, from the square. So that gives me a couple of marks there. I'll do the same thing on the on the wood part I'm going to use a pencil for that I'm going to drill a 3 8 hole in each of these but I'm going to use a 5 16 dowel just to give me a little wiggle room and because I'm using you know gap filling epoxy that will still work just fine to to locate these parts and hold them securely I'm going to use a hand screw clamp that's got a notch cut in it to hold the part when I'm drilling. And I'm going to be drilling multiples of these. Once I get the hole centered, I'm going to clamp this part to my uh, drill press table so I can just loosen and uh, insert multiple parts there. To make sure I get started in the right spot, I'm going to use a center punch to uh, put a dimple there. Now I'm going to start the hole with a centering bit here because those the bigger bits, uh, you know, they're longer. They tend to wander a little bit. So this will give me a good accurate starting hole and then I'll come back with the bigger bit. Oops.
All right, now that I have the holes drilled in both these parts, now notice on this one, they're, they're both pretty off center, but that'll still allow me to get the wood centered on here. I've also cut a uh, little tenon to go in there. And when I put those together, it uh, doesn't bottom. Now it does, it does rock a little bit. And that's because when, uh, when you drill into this brass, the metal kind of mushrooms around there. So I'm going to use a, a countersink just to remove that little bit of metal there. And now, yeah, now that fits nice and nice and flat. If I had a, a, a good flat piece of sandpaper, you could you could rub that on the sandpaper, but I'd be a little concerned about rocking it. So if, if you do that, just really make sure you keep it keep it flat. If if you have a piece that was cut uh, a while ago, it might be oxidized, and that might be another reason you would. Uh, you would want to hit that on some sandpaper, but uh, that that's nice and clean. So I'm going to glue these together with uh, five minute epoxy. This is the Gorilla brand, which I, I like. I like the cap and maybe that's the only thing I like about it. But anyway, it works fine. So I'll squirt a little bit of this on here. So I, I just use an old piece of uh, worn out sandpaper. Well, Squirt out an even amount of both. Mix it well. Now this this is you know five minute epoxy, which means, uh, well, I should say it doesn't mean that it's totally dry in five minutes. That basically means you can't use it after five minutes. There, in the hole here, and I may not have mixed enough. I'd like, I want the hole fairly filled up because I want the gap as much as possible filled. That's the gap between the dowel and the, uh, and the hole there. So actually, I think I've got just enough there. So I'll put these together and yeah, I get a little squeeze out all around. So I'm going to uh, hold that for a sec, make sure everything's aligned, right? I, I need to make sure the wood is hanging out over the brass all the way around. Now I could, I could clamp this, but I, I'm afraid if I clamp it, it's going to uh, move during the clamping process. So I'm just going to hold it for couple minutes and uh, make sure it doesn't move. And then I'm going to let it dry for a bit. I, I would say you want to let it dry at least a half an hour. Otherwise, it's, it's a little gummy to work with. 